We're yeah. here. Hello. Here we go. Uh, here we have. I pretend to Cultural training, training is part of the overall course. The next few slides I have cases from the literature and how these can uh, be provide deep, interesting approaches to global software development. The first one, it's a paper about configuring global software teams. That study identified the following measures for, for GSD. Dispersion. Dispersion in terms of how far away these are people in mileage. How many, how many sites do you have? What's the imbalance between personnel? Do I have a lot of experienced people in site A and inexperienced people in site B? What about project performance? Productivity. How can I measure productivity of the project? How can I measure quality of the project? Control. What's the optimum team size? How do I manage the team? What is the process model, model I follow and so on? As part of the output, they show as part of the output, what they've shown is that how the separation dispersion affects the productivity, how the experience spread affects the productivity and so on. That is with linear regression. But what they've done is like they've done variables such as dispersion, number of sites, personal imbalance, and how it affects productivity, quality, and profits. That's a very interesting site. Uh, 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 sorry, that's a very interesting um, research because it shows the sites you have and how it will affect quality. So by adding a site, you may find that quality drops. So you need to know how much the quality will drop by adding one more site. The second case study is talking about lessons learned in virtual team from global software development. And it has identified Several lessons, for example, software development process should be adapted for visual software environment or global virtual projects should be carefully prepared in advance. And why is that? Because global virtual teams, they have cultural issues you have to address. You may have problems in terms of the relationship building between people because they don't trust each other. Low level of teamness. If you don't see each other often, if you don't have a face-to-face -face relationship, then it doesn't feel that you're in the same team. You may have a lower level of trust. Uh, also, you may have expenses when you need to travel in order to have to have face-to-face -face meetings or technical issues. How can I deal with my manager if uh, they're on the other side of uh, the world and Skype doesn't work, for example? A third part of the literature talks about performance analysis of GSD teams. Again, all the references are there and also uh, the URLs uh, for you to work on. What this study has done, it, it has identified the, the links between availability and unavailability, collaboration, participants, exper expertise, and so on. So this, uh, this is a central team, and this is a software development team. And what you can actually see here is the collaboration between uh, the different resources. You can actually see the expertise of people and how it is, how it is rela relating to different people. What, what this uh, paper is discussing about is that the, there is a productivity flow between teams of experienced and less experienced members. Uh, the, if you can see here, for example, we can have a busy central team working with an experienced team provided, by, uh, provided with low support. Or we can have available central team working with experienced team provided by low support. This is a very important model because it shows to you how virtual teams can be managed and what's the best way of managing the virtual team. Another case, uh, case is talking about project managers and how productivity and performance is affected. It focused on analyzing perf project performance and the variables was the plan duration but was what, how, it, it was, uh, how far it is from the actual duration Issues related to personnel, such as skills, availability, experience, expertise. The required effort for virtual team coordination and management. Function points, productivity, and also the number of defects per function point, point for software development. Another case for global software development was focused on essential communication practices. 
what this study has done is try to understand the global distributed teams and how they can be used for success, successful in software development projects. And it focused on informal face-to-face -face communication. In other words, it focused how face-to-face -face or informal communication is better for solving software development problems. So it affected different kinds of personal and team roles. It included these roles like project manager, customer, proxy, customer, project tracker, and so on. And it found out that the amount of effort increased as the release deadline approached. And it hit its peak during the final iteration before release, which is not rocket science. It happens all the time. One day before your deadline, you do most of the work. So actually, look look this. This line picked up, this was an interim deadline, and that was a final deadline, and then whoosh, everything reduced. Last week I had deadlines for, a, for research projects, European research projects. I had to submit two projects myself, and I had to participate at another six submissions. Believe it or not, I ran all hours run out of time. The reason was that I had to answer all these emails. People asking me, do you need anything else from me? Uh, is my submission okay? Do we need to provide more information from our team? And if you see the number of emails that I had the night before the deadline, and the deadline was 11 o'clock British time, it was ridiculously high. So I've, I've explained a few case studies for the software engineering, uh, the role of GSD in software engineering. Now, I would really like to say a few things about the Genesee project and what we've done for global software development so far. In, in terms of our Middlesex background, I've, I've been doing a lot of work with six different universities in four countries. One of the things that we've done is like we coded our communication behavior in the following categories, planning, contribution, seeking input, reflection, and social interaction. For example, uh, by the way, the, six, the, the four countries were United States, United Kingdom, uh, Turkey, and Panama. So these were the four countries. We had two universities in the United States and two universities in Turkey. And my students and their students, they will work together in projects. For example, my students will do the design, and the Turkish people will do the testing, the Americans will do the database, and we will work. Some of the communication was coded for planning. So for example, let's see who's going to do what. Contribution posts were like, guys, this is the entity relationship diagram we've done in the, in the United Kingdom, please do the testing. Social interaction was like, people were asking, oh, thanks for sending us your data flow diagram, so thanks for sending us your database design. Uh, by the way, how do you spend the time in London? That had nothing to do with the project. But it was social interaction, it was nice for the people to feel like a team. So our results suggested that communication patterns among global software learners may be related to task type, culture, and GPA. The great point average, because we're using an American system. So what we've done is like we've done a proportion of communication for each cluster of the groups, and a proportion of collaborative behaviors in, in different projects, because, because we had so many projects. So our focus... So our focus was to find out how people communicate in different areas. Um, these are some of the James case pilots. We've done two pilots with students from this program. And the first pilot had two teams, the second pilot had four teams. The first pilot had sequential tasks and the second pilot had parallel tasks. So what we've investigated was how people would work one task at a time going to the next, to the next, to the next, while in the second pilot we had tasks working in parallel so different things were doing different things. This screen shows gamification, so how we use a gamification technique, which is you give points to people for every activity they're doing. And the teams with the red were not getting a lot of points, and the students with the red not enough points. The green showed that it was good result. And that showed the analysis of our students in terms of the total number of messages for each user, universities, and different ty types of things. The visualization or the visual analytics for GSD were very useful because it helps you to find out if you have a problem with certain teams. So here we have uh, ELU was the university with most of the posts and messages compared to the other universities. I can see Dr. Manalsi is very happy. Okay. Uh, in terms of the visual analytics, but we were expecting this because you do a lot of work with virtual teams, so you are more experienced than other universities in the country in terms of this. 
Uh, so these were some of the visual analytics in terms of the number of messages for the pilots. This is very interesting because each one of these nodes is a person and actually this person here started to work on day one and their involvement stopped here. And then from that point this guy over here picked up the work, finished here and this is, it shows how many interactions you have in every day. That is useful because it shows which part of the pro for which part of the project each individual is allocated. That is a collaboration uh, uh, visualization because the thicker the line, the thicker the line, the more communication between these two people. That can mean two things. Either these people had a very important task and they were communicating back and forth, or secondly, they had a problem and they were trying to clarify it so they were working back and forth. I have more visualizations there. This is a dashboard that we've created for our project. So basically what that does, it provides visualization things like communication activities over time. So you can see the different types of posts for different types of pe different periods. You can see the form and the chat over time. So you can see how it picks up in certain periods. You can see the number of keywords that are being used. For example, the, the word work is the most popular word that will be used by projects. The last part of the presentation, I wanted to, ex to, say, to say to you that there is this conference in software engineering and education, which is held in, Jan in, in, May, sorry, in June in Germany. And it is interesting if, you, if some of you want to be involved with software engineering education because it focuses on how you can shorten development cycles, shorter time to market, support students in student life cycles, ensure that future software engineers meet industrial needs. The main topics for such conferences are things like creating the curriculum for software engineering, in other words, what do we teach in software engineering, pedagogic aspects of how to teach software engineering, because I used to teach programming. It's far different compared to what I teach now, which is strategic management information systems. You have to follow different pedagogies to teach programming. You have to follow different pedagogies to, to, to teach design because I teach design as well. The tools that you use for software engineering education, social and cultural issues in software engineering education. Uh, I have a link there for Carnegie Mellon and the topics and the, the topics that they included when you teach global software development. So if you're interested more in global software development, these are the things that you need to cover in order to find out more. I would like to thank you very much for your attention. Before I pass to the next speaker, who's going to be Yap, if you have any questions, I'm more than happy to provide you the answers. So, if you have any questions, feel free. Any questions? Yes, I have a question. Okay. It is the software engineering education means to talk about software engineering topics. The software, engineering common, uh, the software engineering conference is about people who want to investigate how two main things. How we educate people in software engineering, in other words, how we educate in software engineering. And secondly, what are the topics, of, how, what are the to topics that we have to cover when we're dealing with software engineering? So this, uh, this is why you have the topics, for example, methods and techniques, best practices and experiences in teaching software engineering. Another topic is when you're teaching software engineering, what are the topics you need to cover? For example, requirements, quality, validation, verification. These are some of the topics. Okay? So that's. But you have the link there, and uh, if you go to the link, you will see what the conference is about. And it's a very, it's one, it's the top conference in software engineering education. Anybody from the remote sites? Questions? Questions? No. Okay. Are you happy? Shut up. They're happy. Okay, thank you very much for listening to me. Yav is going to start next. All right. Just training, training is part of the overall cost.